promote it as much as possible. Uh, critical illness, myopathy, and neuropathy are underdiagnosed conditions within the intensive care settings and contribute to prolonged mechanical ventilation and ventilator weaning failure and ultimately lead to significant morbidity and mortality. Your voice is uh, breaking. Hello? Can you hear me, sir? Am I audible? Yes, yes, Pala. You can, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, critical illness, myopathy, and neuropathy are underdiagnosed conditions within the intensive care settings and contribute to prolonged mechanical ventilation and ventilatory wing failure, which ultimately lead to significant morbidity and mortality. It is an umbrella term under which it is further subdivided into critical illness myopathy, critical illness polyneuropathy, or combination of critical illness polyneuromyopathy. The incidence of uh, uh, CIM and CIPNM is reported from about 25% to 83% depending on the underlying critical illness. The diagnosis is typically entertained only when patients fail to gain from ventilatory support and the true time of onset is often uncertain given the concurrent encephalopathy, sedation, possible paralysis. Presentation varies slightly depending on the underlying disease process. Critical illness myopathy is characterized by more proximal than distal weakness, sensory preservation, and atrophy depending on the duration of illness. And a critical illness polyneuromyopathy, on the other hand, is characterized by more distal than proximal weakness, sensory changes, and limited atrophy. Uh, CIPNM is in turn uh, characterized by a combination of uh, proximal greater than distal weakness and uh, distal uh, sensory loss and uh, variable atrophy. Initial preservation of reflexes is common, but gradual loss will occur as weakness progresses in all types. Initially, first we have to make a differential diagnosis of uh, neuromuscular disorders where uh, uh, initially we face when uh, we are trying to wean patients off from the ventilator. Uh, when it is a motor neuron is affected, we can uh, have a differential diagnosis of amyotropic lateral scler sclerosis, polymyelitis, po sorry, poliomyelitis, uh, GPS, and then uh, heavy metal toxicity, vasculitis, sarcoidosis, mononeuritis multiplex, critical illness, polyneuropathy, and myopathy. And uh, when neuromuscular junction, it is myasthenia gravis, neuromuscular blockade, lambert eaton myasthenic syndrome, Botulinum toxicity, organophosphate toxicity, and tetrodotoxin toxicity. Muscle, it is rhabdomyolysis, mitochondrial myopathy, muscular dystrophy, critical illness myopathy, acid maltase deficiency. This is more of a diagnosis of exclusion. Uh, the path main pathology, uh, physiological uh, factors which are involved, uh, uh, main mechanisms involved uh, that can... Uh, that are theoretically identified to result in this uh, are uh, include the following but are not limited to reduced excitability of muscle and nerve, death of the peripheral nerve axons, altered ionic uh, like uh, calcium and sodium regulation, myosin loss, myofiber atrophy and death, bioenergetic failure, neuromuscular transmission dysfunction, altered catabolism to anabolism ratio and profound increase in systemic inflammation. So this is one of the uh, flow diagrams which is there. In critical illness, there could be when uh, there is a cortisol response and exogenous steroids are also involved, which can cause hyperglycemia. Hyperglycemia induces increased uh, reactive oxygen species production, and uh, uh, which further lead to mitochondrial impairment and uh, cause neuronal death. Uh, there is also a tissue hypoperfusion, which can cause renal failure, hyperkalemia, which causes membrane depolarization causing to neuronal death. And uh, there is a failure of autophagy. Uh, then hyperglycemia is there, the uh, reactive, uh, reactive oxygen species also can affect the autophagy. And there are many other mechanisms also which are involved in uh, loss of autophagy, which causes energetic crisis, uh, sorry, which causes accumulation of protein and mitochondrial debris, which further leads to muscular and myofibrillar atrophy with decreased protein content. And uh, there is also a uh, suppression of pulsatile growth hormone release, which uh, causes impaired uh, growth hormone 1 signaling, signal in, which also leads to muscular uh, atrophy. And uh, when there is an increased vascular permeability and edema, which itself, which itself can cause neuro uh, nerve ischemia and uh, further causing energetic crisis. And uh, all of these result in critical illness polyneuropathy. And when there is a systemic inflammatory response, which causes necrosis factors to be released. 
or it can cause us altered sar uh, sarcoplasmic reticulum calcium release and there is also increased ubiquitin protease uh, pathway activity and uh, so this all can lead to to muscular uh, myofibrillar atrophy with decrease in protein content, which result in critical illness myopathy. So, what are the risk factors? Three major uh, agreed uh, risk uh, agreed upon risk factors for uh, critical illness uh, uh, acquired uh, sorry ICO acquired weakness include sepsis, multi organ failure, and the persistent persistent systemic inflammation. And uh, the rest of the factors like parental nutrition prolonged ICU admission, more commonly in female genders, uh, hyperglycemia, multi-organ failure, drugs like steroid, neuromuscular blockers, uh, ARDS, mechanical ventilation, all of these, some of the uh, risk factors for uh, critical illness, uh, poly uh, neuromyopathy. So how do we diagnose? Diagnosis is made via electrodiagnostic studies. Although the differential diagnosis for weakness and ventilatory failure is what diffuse weakness of moderate severity warrants evaluation. In conjunction with evaluation for neuromuscular causes of weakness, other etiologies should also be explored. Uh, Non-neuromuscular uh, cases for ventilatory failure include primary pulmonary, cardiovascular, endocrinologic, and central nervous system diseases. So this is a simplified... Uh, diagram of uh, uh, diagnostic criteria uh, for critical illness polyneuropathy you can see uh, there will be limb weakness or difficulty weaning from ventilator following uh, excluding other non-neuromuscular clauses like i've already described previously electrophysiological evidence of motor and sensory uh, polyneuropathy with axonal features uh, uh, we have to see that there are no demyelinating features absence of abnormal response on repetitive nerve stimulation uh, absence of other neuromuscular disorders that better accounts for the above findings. If all of the five are there, then it is mostly a definitive diagnosis. But if probable is if one, three, four, and five are met. In uh, critical illness myopathy, uh, patient has critical illness followed by limb weakness or difficulty weaning from ventilator. Compound muscle action potentials less than 80%, a lower limit of normal in at least two nerves without conduction block. And a CMAP duration increased on nerve or direct muscle stimulation. Sensory nerve action potentials are greater than 80% of lower, lim uh, lower limit of normal. And needle my electromyography shows myopathic potentials with early or normal recruitment in awake or cooperative patients. Absence of neuro abnormal response to repetitive nerve stimulation. Muscle biopsy with evidence of myopathy, that is uh, myosin loss or muscle necrosis and absence of other neuromuscular disorder that better accounts for above findings. If all the eight are met, it is mostly a definitive diagnosis. If uh, it is a probable when one, three to six and eight are met. Uh, in critical illness, polyneuromyopathy, uh, concomitant clinical, electrophysiological and histopathological features of both axonal and axonal polyneuropathy and neuropathy and myopathy are present. So this is elaborated uh, diagnostic uh, uh, evaluation for uh, assessment of weakness yeah. when you are assessing for uh, peripheral uh, assessment of peripheral muscles um, uh, there's a mrc score which is also uh, which is a which has six categories which uh, it is a bilateral score, uh, scoring of shoulder abduction elbow flexion wrist extension ex extension etc it is a gold standard non invasive bedside testing reliable and valid and uh, but it may be difficult, the disadvantages are it may be affected by position of the patient and availability of, uh, 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 you know, uh, if the patient is immobile or if this patient is in dressing or anything, it is difficult to assess in those. Um, and then MRC is uh, some, some score of four categories, uh, that is uh, zero of paralysis, one is more than 50% loss of strength, two less than 50% loss of strength, and three is normal. Same as above weakness, but it is a non-invasive, same bedside testing, excellent inter-rater reliability. And uh, it is also the problem with all these tests are it is uh, potential, there is a subjectivity based on who is doing the test and further validation is still needed. And handheld dynamometry, which assesses the hand grip strength, uh, it is a quantitative measure. It is also non-invasive, quick, easy bedside uh, testing. Um, uncertain whether representative of global muscle strength. So this is one of the disadvantages. 
uh, functional status score for ICU. Usually, uh, it is uh, roll. Uh, this is tested by rolling transfer from spine to sit, sitting at the edge of bed, transfer from sit to stand and walking. It is feasible and safe. Safe evaluates pa patient's functional abilities. Does uh, has not undergone any additional psychometric testing for validation or scale scale analysis. <laughs> Uh, electrophysiological tests, which include full nerve conduction studies, NCS and needle electromyography as already described previously. It is a mildly invasive test and requires specialized training and partially requires patient's cooperation and uh, anticoagulation therapy is a relative contraindication. And a single uh, NCS, peroneal CMAP uh, amplitude and sural uh, SNAP uh, amplitude. It's a shorter tester duration than full four limb. And less painful than full NCS and EMG, non-invasive, no need for volitional patient's uh, movement, and good to excellent sensitivity, good specificity. But abnormal uh, peroneal or sural NCS requires follow-up with full NCS and EMG to confirm uh, see a, a, a critical illness polyneuropathy, uh, neuromyopathy diagnosis. And uh, next is uh, direct muscle stimulation, uh, stimulation, which can distinguish between uh, uh, polyneuropathy uh, neuropathy and myopathy and patient does not uh, need to be awake and cooperative but this also requires a specialized training and not widely available next is uh, imaging you can do ultrasonography and computer uh, uh, and uh, ct also to uh, evaluate the muscle area thickness and uh, based on that we can see if there is any if there is any uh, atrophy uh, present or not and <laughs> For uh, ultrasonography, uh, the descent, uh, it is a bedside uh, maneuver. It is easy and relatively quick and it is non-invasive. You can measure the quantity and uh, quality of the muscle uh, muscle area thickness, central tendon thic uh, thickness. And uh, if there's any fasciculations or any subcutaneous edema, it all can be measured. But uh, it does not uh, exactly measure the uh, muscle mass and muscle uh, muscle thickness underestimates muscle loss as compared with the cross-sectional area. And it is operator dependent and uh, precautions need to obtain to uh, producibility results. And exactly same place you have to evaluate for uh, to get the uh, reliable results. And uh, for CT, it is, uh, it is good to uh, measure infiltration of muscle by adipose tissue and fat-free skeletal muscle. It is highly accurate and highly reliable and valid in patients with severe fluid retention and allows evaluation of deepest muscles also. But it is high cost, time consuming and mostly transport of the ICU patients outside of the ICU is needed, which may not be feasible for everybody and a high level of radiation exposure is there. And the MRI, dual energy, X-ray absorptiometry and uh, neutron uh, act activation analysis are some of the imaging test, uh, tests which can be done. And uh, uh, for biopsy analysis, nerve and muscle biopsies can be done. In this, we can see this, if there's any degeneration or myelination status of the nerve fibers, muscle fiber atrophy, necrosis, inflammation. And uh, these have increased the mechanistic understanding of the uh, 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 diagno uh, diagnosis of this. But it is an invasive procedure and uh, uh, complications such as bleeding, wound infection and pain can be there. And a specialized expertise needed for obtaining and interpreting samples and prognostic value is poorly explored. And uh, for assessment of for respiratory muscles, um, for this are some of the volition functional testing, uh, testing which uh, requires the patients, uh, patients to be awake. Uh, uh, examination, uh, finding of the maximal inspiratory and expiratory uh, pressure, which assesses the inspiratory muscle strength and expiratory muscle strength, measures global respiratory muscle strength, high values exclude respiratory weakness, and prediction of duration of mechanical ventilation and mortality, but uh, lower values may predict poor technique. And trans diaphragmatic pressure, uh, diaphragmatic strength weakness uh, is measured in this. And uh, specific measure for diaphragm, it is a specific measure for diaphragmatic strength and high values exclude respiratory weakness. But this is an invasive and requires electro, uh, so requires esophageal and gastric balloons. It is difficult to obtain. And again, low values may also represent poor technique. And uh, non-volitional functional testing includes trans diagra uh, diaphragmatic pressure in response with uh, response to bilateral pitch phrenic, uh, pitching of uh, phrenic nerve stimulation. This measures the diaphragmatic strength weakness. 
and a phrenic nerve conduction time. It is mostly objective and uh, predictive of duration of, uh, it predicts the duration of mechanical ventilation and mortality. And it is better than maximum inspiratory pressure. But it is an invasive and requires uh, magnetic stimulation and technically it is difficult to perform. And there's one more uh, endotracheal uh, tube, uh, tube pressure in response to bilateral phrenic nerve stimulation during airway occlusion. Um, this is also an invasive method and requires magnetic stimulation and uh, dif difficult to perform. Next is to assess uh, chest X-rays uh, to see for the diaphragmatic position. Uh, it is uh, easily available and bedside and low, but it has low sensitivity and specificity. Uh, ultrasonography to check for diaphrag diaphragmatic excursion and uh, diaphragmatic uh, thickening fraction or uh, uh, fraction weakness. It is easy bedside non-invasive test. Equipments are available mostly in the ICU, relatively inexpensive. But uh, limited value during assisted breathing. Um, uh, so this is uh, electrophysiological and biopsy studies comparing the CMAP altitudes and uh, sorry uh, the study variables in uh, uh, polyneuropathy and myopathy. In terms of CMAP altitude, it is decreased in polyneuropathy and myopathy. CMAP duration it is normal in uh, polyneuropathy, but it is increased in myopathy. Uh, sing, uh, SNAP uh, amplitude is decreased in polyneuropathy and it is normal in myopathy. Nerve conduction velocity is normal or near normal in both of them. EMG at rest, fibrillation potentials on positive sharp waves are seen uh, seen in both of them. Um, MUP uh, voluntary muscle activation, it is uh, of long duration and high amplitude on polyphasic and poly, uh, polyneuropathy, but it is short duration and low amplitude in uh, myopathy. And uh, repetitive nerve stimulation uh, causes absence of decremental response in both of them. Direct muscle stimulation, it shows a normal excitability in uh, polyneuropathy, but it is reduced in myopathy. And now biopsy, there will be proximal distal axonal, sorry, primary distal axonal degeneration of sensory nerve fibers and there's no demyelination. And uh, this is normal in myopathy. And muscle my biopsy may show denervation atrophy of type 1 and type 2 muscles in polyneuropathy. Uh, but this may show spe uh, <coughs> a spectrum of abnormalities like myofiber atrophy, angulated fibers, necrosis, fat degeneration, focal or diffuse loss of thick filaments in myopathy. Uh, the common complications of uh, this is it causes increased length of ICU and hospital stay, weaning failure, increased cost for the patients and increased mortality and morbidity. The short term complications like previously described, it increases the hospital mortality, ICU, uh, hospital length of stay, in hospital costs, uh, increased duration of mechanical ventilation, increase uh, difficult uh, extubation, uh, and uh, it can cause uh, swallowing disorders. Long term, it increases the mort uh, post ICU mortality. It decreases uh, discharges to home and can increase discharge to other hospital or rehabilitation center, and uh, decrease uh, physical functioning and increased uh, rehabilitation length of stay. Uh, preventions and management. Uh, many uh, interventions are uh, pharmacological interventions are tried, but uh, they have not shown any proven benefits like IDIG. And uh, uh, the main function uh, pharmacological intervention which is helpful is found to be euglycemia. And under research, there is a modulation of uh, uh, pro-inflammatory pathways such as growth differentiation factor 15 is under research. But uh, as of now, there is no data available on it, whether it is useful or not. Uh, next is functional electrical stimulation. Um, in the non-ICU population, it has been shown to increase muscle strength and excess tolerance. However, for management of uh, uh, ICU acquired weakness has demonstrated mixed findings. Nutrition, early enteral nutrition and avoiding early palantral nutrition is better because palantral nutrition, in some cases, they have told uh, amino acids which are given, uh, if they are given early, it can cause increased urea production. But amino acids are also required for a protein buildup. So it is a mixed review whether to be started uh, uh, only as amino acids, but whether if it is given in along with the uh, glucose and all, it is a better this, uh, better. Uh, uh, absorption and better uh, results, but enteral is always better than a parenteral nutrition. Prognosis, it is a, so ICU acquired weakness is both a marker and mediator for poor clinical outcomes post ICU admission. 
functional recovery can take weeks to months and in some cases full functional recovery is never achieved uh, but uh, myopathy has a better overall outcomes than polyneuro uh, than polyneuropathy perhaps owing to the greater inherent plasticity in skeletal muscle compared with the peripheral nerves so this is uh, pathophysiological uh, sorry these are summary of uh, prevention and management strategies of uh, critical illness uh, weakness so the the proven benefits are seen with early mobilization, intensive insulin therapy, and uh, like I've told already, amino acid supplementation along with uh, proper uh, glucose uh, management for, is uh, shown better for uh, uh, improvement in uh, post uh, critical illness uh, uh, weakness. Uh, but non proven, not proven or uh, mixed findings are seen with uh, functional electrical stimulation passive mechanical loading and uh, omega-3 uh, uh, supplementation. Thank you. So uh, your, your talk is over? Oh, yes, sir. This is over. Okay. Very good. Very good. So, uh, I highlighted almost all the uh, like uh, aspect of critical illness, myopathy and uh, neuropathy. So basically, uh, the one thing which I'd like to highlight is this is a very chronic issue. Patients who are on mechanical ventilator, on uh, inotrop, prolonged ICU stay, and uh, that leads to all the possible complications. So these are the patients where uh, you can see all the spectrum of the critical illness. But you're starting from the all the muscle weakness to sepsis, infection, diaphragm weakness, ventilator induced diaphragm dysfunction, and all possible things what you have encountered in critical care practice actually. So uh, first is to identify very important. So uh, like uh, as you know, uh, the less is more in critical care. So the lesser use of all the possible agents. So like neuromuscular agents, steroids, and uh, uh, giving a early uh, winning trial, uh, opening trial, breathing trial, it always helps. So as far as possible, deep sedations and uh, deeper level of muscle relaxant, particularly should be avoided and uh, uh, it should be limited actually. And uh, as far as possible, uh, it should be only restricted to patients for initial 24, 48 hours, where the acute phase uh, is the issue actually, like the severe hypoxia or like severe refractory hypoxemia or such kind of thing where the patient is an inotrop, but it should not be used as a routine practice. That is the thing. And second thing is to identify such patients are sometimes actually a challenge. Sometimes you find the patients are fully awake, conscious, uh, they are responding, but they are not able to, uh, they are, don't have a proper tone. Sir, your voice is not coming. This uh, prognostication scorings are very, very important, particularly what you have highlighted, the MRC score. And uh, these are the scoring system to be used while, uh, like particularly uh, discussing with the patient and the relatives particularly. And you have to uh, tell them that it's a, it's a, the recovery may take weeks, sometimes maybe months. And there is no active therapy is actually uh, available. Particularly, there is no major pharmacological therapy or intervention which will help. It is only the rehabilitation care and uh, like uh, the good nutrition, good nursing care, your past drug and BID. And those things are very, very important actually in such patients. And uh, ultrasound is a very good tool like you have already highlighted. During the winning, you have to measure all your winning parameters echo to know the cardiac conditions because these patients can go into uh, different uh, uh, right ventricular dysfunctions during weaning or sometimes pre-existing cardiac problems may aggravate. So those are the things so in, in ultrasound you have to ideally find out the diaphragm thickness, the shortening fraction and uh, of course uh, the lung screen, the lung window screen to know the weaning in, uh, parameters whether these patients are actually ready to fit to uh, win up from the ventilator or not. You have to treat them like a particular the chronic winning patients, those uh, where the winning trials are given very slowly, every day, 
two hours in the morning, two hours in the afternoon, and this may take a long and lot of time. All the possible MDR infections sometimes may happen because they have a prolonged ICU stay, fungal infections. So it has been a proven fact that the more the patients stay in the ICU, the like more than a week, sometimes the chances of MDR infections increases. So that is the reason infection prevention is very, very important. Bed sore prevention is very important. And routine, uh, your neuro monitoring particularly uh, is a challenge actually. Sometimes you may have to sip the patient down for the nerve conduction. Sometimes they may be on ventilator. Sometimes you may require a sophisticated test like diaphragmatic facing, the diaphragmatic stimulation, the phrenic nerve stimulation, and uh, all those things are uh, very important. So from the DNB actually critical care, from the DNB critical care point of view, the students may be asked in the exams, particularly like uh, what are the issues, what are the uh, interventions that will be helpful, and how could you prognosticate to the family, good communication, multidisciplinary team meeting, and uh, of course, it's a it's a one of the uh, important critical care topic examiner wants to like and the differential diagnosis, of course. So the table which you have shown, it should be ideally at least five to six differential diagnosis of such disorders should be kept in the mind, limiting the your uh, your, uh, your the strict sugar control and limiting the use of steroids as far as possible are very very uh, important actually. So any questions or any comment from uh, anyone? I think we can. Take here. So you have shown the prognostication scoring, right? Follow me. Sir, only have MR, MRC scoring on all. Uh, that, that, is... that is the scoring for the muscle weakness, right? Oh, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is, I think, some prognostication scoring systems are also available. Just, just find out on, from the net, actually. Okay, sir. I will see. So, those things are very important during the counseling, actually. So, those are please go through all the recent available literatures. And all okay, those things. sir. What are the role of all the uh, neuroprotective agents? What are mm. the evidences? And what are the role of the different uh, your uh, uh, stress elements? Or what are the role of the any newer drugs which are available? These are the things which will be mostly asked. They told that uh, that androgen oxygen prolate are still under study, sir. Growth factors and uh, they are uh, still under study, and they've told that they have not found any uh, evidence to, uh, to be applied in uh, human uh, uh, trials yet. So this pharmacologically, they they, they right. said that uh, there is no uh, further. Uh, I mean, there there were no proven uh, benefits by any pharmacological agent. Prognostication, I will see, sir. I, I didn't find it. I'll I'll search. Yeah, because we have come across certain patients who almost stay, you know, for one patient during COVID, uh, he stayed almost for six months, actually. And he recovered after one year. He is a, uh, quite a patient of uh, like uh, around 55, 60 years. Had a severe COVID, ARDA is ventilated, then uh, prone, then he developed critical illness, neuromyopathy. He was undergoing rehabilitation programs. In between, he developed a lot of uh, infections. He was settled. Then uh, all the robotic rehabilitation has been started. Patient almost, he is now able to work actually after a period, almost a period of one year. So so this is how the patients from the relatives and also the treating doctor's counseling is very, very important. That is what I mean to say actually. So three, four patients we have encountered almost for more than a month actually. They stay in the ICU. So you have to handle them with care and uh, you have to like prognosticate them to the family also. So just go through the prognostication scoring systems so it will help you in your clinical practice also.